Welcome to the first demo on firewalls. So we will be demonstrating a Dell SonicWall firewall here. Now you might ask, why did we choose Dell SonicWall? And uh, the most obvious reason is that I worked for Dell SonicWall for four years, so I'm pretty familiar with this uh, product. Uh, the other reason is they have a very convenient demo site. So you can go and right up to this site and uh, do this along with me or play around with it yourself as much as you like. Uh, and also I chose this because it's, uh, it's GUI based, graphical based, as opposed to command based like, like the Cisco's. So it's much easier and more intuitive to demonstrate the GUI based. Anyway, let's, let's keep in mind that the purpose of this demonstration is to learn the general concepts of firewalls, not to learn the specifics of how to, of how to configure this particular firewall. So let's get started. Uh, the first uh, thing you might remember is that we had trusted versus untrusted zones uh, in the lecture. And here you see that they have a WAN zone right here, which is the same as the untrusted zone. And they have a LAN zone, which is the same as the trusted zone. And they even say it right here. Okay. And then you have a DMZ. So those are already, this is just by default that you get these zones. So let's look at the firewall itself. Now, the thing that you want to realize is if you look up here, it says a network security appliance, which is what it is. So there is no such thing nowadays as a, a firewall appliance. They're almost all network security appliance, which has all the functionality of what the older concept of the firewall is, plus a whole lot more. So if you look at the access rules here, and we're in a matrix, then you can see the actual firewall rules. So you can see from LAN to WAN, and we can look at that here, and you can see the access rules from LAN to WAN, or from the inside of your network to the outside, everything is allowed. Now you can add firewall rules right here by just clicking add, and you can go ahead and, and add as many rules as you want. Now if we go click matrix again, then we can look at another one. We can look at WAN to LAN. Now here, they deny everything. So if you think about that, you don't want people on the outside connecting to your, uh, to your network. So that's denied. Now you can add rules here, just like you, just like, uh, you did before. And you can add as many rules as you want. Now you need to realize that, that the order matters. So what it's going to do in any firewall is it's going to start at the top and work down. So if the first rule is deny, it's just going to go ahead and deny it. It's not even going to look further. So if you add rules here, you want to use a priority. After you add the rule, you can use this priority and move them up and down. You want to make sure that any, any allow rule that you add is going to be before this deny or else it's not going to have any effect. And likewise, we can go back to now to the matrix here and you can see that there, there are other zones here that you can make firewalls uh, rules to also. So if you remember, we spoke about first generation firewall functionality, which was packet filtering, second generation firewall functionality, which was stateful packet filtering. Well, when you configure any of these firewall rules, you get both automatically. Now, if you want the third generation of firewall functionality, which is application level, then you can go to app rules. And you can create app rules here that give you the ability to filter on almost anything that would be inside of the packet. So you can see that you can create here, uh, if you go to app rules, you can uh, add a new policy here and you can create any app rule that you like. 
or if you want if you want the easy way out so to speak you can go to app control advanced now what they have here is these are app rules that are already configured for you and you can choose to use them or not so for example let's let's take this YouTube here it's under the see that we're under the category of multimedia if you go to YouTube here and click on configure you can see is block is disabled so if you wanted to block YouTube then you just enable that and then you save that and then it'll block YouTube uh, now you can you can also log it and all kinds of stuff now let's look at some others here so if we go to peer-to-peer -peer, is a lot of <laughs> there's an awful lot of <laughs> there's an awful lot of dangerous peer-to-peer -peer apps that you, so you can decide that you want to just block all peer-to-peer -peer. so you click on here and then you see where it says block disable you just enable that save that and it'll block all peer-to-peer -peer. so you can see that you can pretty easily block almost any kind of application that you like that's what application the beauty of application control now if you remember we said that in addition to being a firewall and a firewall would be basically packet filtering stateful packet filtering and application level filtering in addition to that there are other services that make it a security appliance so we can look at our security services here and under the security services we'll just go through them uh, first one is content filtering so in content filtering you can configure this so that different websites are um, that you can block different websites so you can go to policy here and then if you go to the default policy then you see that they have all kinds of categories of websites that you can block so you can choose any of these that you want so they start you off here with stuff that almost any business would want to uh, to block but then you can go ahead and maybe you want to block job search or maybe you want to block email any of these things so some of these things you're going to block because there's absolutely no reason to be using them on on a uh, at work or you might just want to block stuff like um, you might want to block stuff like humor and jokes just so people don't waste that time close that out okay so here's your intrusion prevention service and what you see here is here's all your policies now this is built in and you have the ability here if you if you just say enable this then you're going to get the default all the default signatures okay now if you look right here you can see there's a signature timestamp so this shows that they are updating your signatures so these are all the signatures that you have here so if you go to all categories uh, each one of these has an awful lot of signatures in it so you can see how many signatures you got just on, if you look at this um, ActiveX these are ActiveX signatures or DNS signatures whatever so there's I don't know a couple thousand signatures here I suppose and pretty much if you just click enable IPS it's going to do its job but then you can get much more fine control if you want likewise is similar for anti-spyware so just it's also signature based so in the anti-spyware if you enable that then you have anti-spyware and you can see that it looks like this 3400 anti-spyware signatures and you can just accept them all or you can choose to eliminate any signature that isn't working properly for you. That is the end of this demo. Thank you very much for watching.